guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. We are here in sunny, hot Florida, which is home to Rady's Rides. And I have that one SUV that is receiving some changes for 2022, including this new trim. This is it. This is a Honda Passport. This particular one is a passport to off-road adventure. It's known as the Trail Sport. But before we get into this midsize two-row SUV, let's talk about what's going on here. The Honda Passport. Believe it or not, it first appeared back in the 1990s. When I was graduating from high school, the Passport came out. Well, guess what? The Passport made a return a few years ago, and it came back in a very different way. First of all, a lot larger. But hey, haven't all of us grown a little over the years? Second of all, more off-road capability. Now, Honda wanted to not rest on its laurels and kind of take some more off-road magic because that seems to be the thing a lot of people are doing is overlanding and off-roading. So this new Passport not only gets revisions across all the trims for 2022, but you also have a Trail Sport trim. Now, the interesting thing is other manufacturers are also taking advantage of this off-road opportunity. We've already talked about the Sorento with its X-Line trim, which is going to be that off-road version of the Sorento. The Sorento is a midsize, but it is a three-row midsize. So what I want to do with this particular trail sport is I want to talk about real quickly what the changes are, but also compare it to another newcomer to this off-road world of SUVs, the Hyundai Santa Fe XRT. If you haven't heard about that one, I'll leave the link at the end of this review. We did a review, full review of it while we were over in Texas late, late last year. So let's go ahead, let's dive into our bright white Passport Trail Sport and see is it the better midsize off-road style SUV over the newcomer, that Hyundai Santa Fe XRT. Let's find out. Right off the bat, what are the changes? You're gonna get a change up on your headlight housing design and the whole front fascia. And then on top of it, the cherry on top of this white Sunday is gonna be a new grill. So what you're looking at on the Trail Sport trim of the Passport is gloss black across the whole brow of the front of the vehicle. You got that projector beam style headlight. We got our LED daytime running lamps. Working your way down, we got functional corner air curtains that's gonna channel the air down the vehicle. The track, which is the space in between the front wheels and rear wheels has been widened for 2022. You're still dealing with the old fashioned bulbs in your turn singles, but you know what? The style is definitely looking more aggressive and we do have LED fog lamps all the way down below. Now, when you're comparing this to the Hyundai Santa Fe, you're gonna get a little bit better light technology uh, and a little bit more rounded shape. This definitely looks a little extra rugged. Now, as we come across the front grill, you got that massive, H badging, favorite flavor flay, would love to wear this. Take off the clock, wear this Honda badge around his neck. You got that metallic gunmetal gray finish on our grill, new for 2022, our Trail Sport badge. So this grill, the black trim, and of course this badge is all part of the Trail Sport trim. The orange is that off-road ruggedness. They actually took the orange from a sunset. When they were on the top of Mount Kilimanjaro, the engineers and designers were watching a sunset. This is what they saw with Mount Kilimanjaro in the background. So that's something that they want to bring over to the Honda Passport Trail Sport. Functionality on the lower side, flat black, and then you are going to get this metallic gunmetal gray finish. You do have a little bit more ground clearance, give you over eight inches of ground clearance. Would have been nice for this to sit just a little bit higher, but still, from an aggressive standpoint, they did make it look more muscular from the front. Now, when we get up onto the hood, same exact hood. I love the pearlescent metallic white paint. Sparkles like a diamond in this blazing hot spring day Florida hot sun. Now, as we come around the bend, what are we working with? You get specific tires and wheels to the Passport Trail Sport. So like I was telling you, this Passport is an adventure. It's a Passport to adventure. So you're looking at an 18-inch wheel, machine aluminum with the metallic gray tires, more of an off-road, those Firestone destination tires, because having a Passport is all about getting to the destination. It's got a little bit more shielding on the, on the side of the uh, sidewall, the tire, 245 on the width, 
and a meaty 60 series sidewall. They went ahead and retuned all the shock absorbers. They strengthened the chassis to give more rigidity. That's gonna give you a more composed off-road vehicle. Now, one of the zonks for me on the front is that there's no forward-facing camera. And to me, if you're gonna go off-roading, something totally required is a forward-facing camera. So you might have to take that old JVC handy cam and attach it to the hood if you wanna have a camera out the front. You do get flat black around the fender openings, but you know what? It doesn't come up very high. So I don't mind it on an off-road trim. As we come down the side on the Passport Trailsport, you're getting gloss black on the mirror caps, flat black around the top and bottom of the window treatments, color matched on the door handles, and then flat black along the bottom. All makes sense, and like I said, looks more rugged. We got our raised roof rails, get your crossbars, get your cargo basket, put just about anything up there. Nice raised and their gloss black to match all the other touches. Coming towards the rear, you're gonna get a nice long low roof spoiler, color match shark fin antenna, and then at the tail end of the business, we do have some changes. You have some flat satin black across the middle here. We do have our LED tail lights, but like you can see, turn singles are not LED. Trail Sport with the all-wheel drive, 70% of the power could be sent to the rear wheels. And then guess what? From that 70%, 100% could be sent right or left, depending on what you're doing as you're off-roading. A much more effective system than what's on the Hyundai Santa Fe XRT. Now, as we come all the way down to base camp level, I do like the way they have the exhaust. This is actually taken off of the Acura MDX. So you got a little sprinkling of Acura with the exhaust. You got the metallic gunmetal gray passport. I'm glad all the badging is black and it looks really clean. That wiper, what are we going to do? I would like to tuck it underneath the spoiler, but they didn't do that. But let's go ahead. Let's pop the hood and see what's power, powering this trail right, guys, sport. we got the hood popped. It does have a prop rod, which I am gonna zonk that. And then underneath the hood, you'll notice how low the engine sits in the frame. Not the sexiest of engine covers. It literally looks like a cover off of, uh, off of a trash can that I've seen. But what's underneath it is definitely not trash. And if you're comparing it to the Hyundai Santa Fe, you're gonna get more power because guess what? We got more cylinders. We got a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6, 280 horsepower, 262 pound-feet of torque. It is made it to a nine-speed automatic transmission. So we got more gears. The Subaru, the uh, Hyundai has an eight-speed. This has a nine-speed. We got our all-wheel drive, zero to 60 in about 6.1 seconds. Top speed is 114 miles per hour. MPGs, 19 in the city, 24 on the highway, and the vehicle weighs 4,250 pounds. And like I was saying, they retuned everything for the off-road adventure, and we got hill descent control. But while we go ahead, let's fire up the trail sport and hear what it sounds like. Hi right, guys, we're inside this 2022 Passport Trail Sport. I know you're saying, well, Joe, I've looked at pricing of the Hyundai. I've looked at even vehicles like the Subaru Outback. I'm very curious about this Passport. I like the new style to it and definitely these off-road features. How much is it? So the way that this one is optioned has an MSRP right around $43,695. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Now you are getting some really clean style some people might say it's a little on the bland side, but still soft touch up top. You got a gunmetal kind of metallic gray finish in the center. And then you'll notice the orange stitching. That is part of the Trail Sport package to feature the orange uh, stitching. Now you have an awesome hot dog holder right in the center. As you're camping, get that foot long. Maybe you go big, you go for a foot long and a half hot dog, extra relish, mustard, you could put it right there. You also have a pickle holder and a drink holder right in the center. And then on the bottom is where you could actually put some nicely roasted over the fire s'mores so that nobody else gets to them at 
your campsite. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same style as before. I think where Hyundai kind of wins is in the interior with some of the newer finishes and newer features. Soft touch though, there's that gray finish. It's got like a little scratchy sound if you scratch your nail on it. Infotainment, you're looking at an eight inch infotainment system. Now this is uh, a system that's been around for a while, but the good news is it is touchscreen and you do have an audio volume knob, which is great. Navigation, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. Is it a touchscreen? Of course it's a touchscreen. You can go into your different settings very easily. I could go into home and I wanna show you one thing in particular. We go into our settings, I go into vehicle, and then now you could adjust a ton of things. I think one of the important ones is power tailgate setup. You could have the power tailgate keyless setting from when the power tailgate opens. You could have it anytime or only when it's locked, or you could do power tailgate open uh, by outer handle. And you could do it off where it's manual all the time or on where you have a choice between power and manual. So this is where you're able to really just set everything up exactly the way you want it. Plus, what I like about Honda system over Hyundai is watch this. You could actually move the icons wherever you want. A lot of people aren't aware of that. So you could actually move these icons wherever you want and put the important ones on the first page and then the ones that maybe are less important. Like maybe if you hear social playlists, maybe have your Facebook favorites and then over here have your MySpace favorites. Just depending on which one. Maybe you use MySpace more. I don't know. That's up to you. Throw it in reverse. There's your space right behind the Passport Trailsport. You do have your trajectory, but it is a little grainy. One of the things that I said was missing was what? Were you paying attention? Forward-facing camera. That's the big zonk. No forward-facing camera. Back to park. We got our dual climate control, which is great. We got our radius ride settings. You hit that, that's where you're able to adjust the rear AC. It's not really the radius ride settings. We were joking about that. But I like to think of it as the radius ride settings. Or you could adjust the AC for the people in the back. We got a nice little cubby here. That's where you're going to put um, your Tootsie Rolls on one side. I don't know if you can see. There's a little divider. Tootsie Rolls on one side and maybe some blow pops on the other. That sounds good. How many licks does it take to get to the center of a blow pop? I have no idea. Why don't you find out? We got heated seats, three stages, no ventilated seats. At 43 grand, I would like some ventilated seats, please. 12 volt, USB-A, just don't stick your blow pop in there. That's gonna hurt. They did relocate the wireless charging, which I think is smart, and it's larger for those big iPad style phones that you guys like to use. I like the, the gray finish here, just like on the dash, two cup holders. This is gonna control your nine speed automatic. So, that's one more gear than the Hyundai has. There's your hill descent control. You do have that nice sliding lid here. Now, the great news is you can put a bag of Lay's chips, and I'm telling you right now, even though I don't like these captain's chair armrests, you could reach. You could be like the salt bay guy. You could just reach right into those chips. Or maybe you're salting your steak. You could do that right here. But anyways, I'm not really a big fan of these armrests. They're too small. Give me a nice, thick armrest, and I'd rather have it here, but like I said, you could put a purse, a purse, a bag, a satchel, a sack, or a steak. Slide it up. What do you got? You could keep all your seasonings in here. Maybe some uh, A and one steak sauce. You could do some marinating in there. We got a 12 volt, another one, and a USB A. Slide it back. Seats. Trail sport specific. How do I know that? It says it right there. Orange stitching. Like I said, Mount Kilimanjaro with the orange stitching all the way down. Nice soft bolstering. You do have power assist for the passenger, power assist for the driver. We got a standard size sunroof. It would have been nice if they gave us a little bit more glass, but you know what? At least you get a, a nice sunroof. But why don't you come over here? I want to show you behind the steering wheel in this Passport Trailsport. Right, guys, business time in this Passport Trailsport. You do get these really tasteful, nice looking Trailsport all-weather floor mats that comes with the vehicle. So that really is gonna help protect the carpet. If you're wondering, does this have a clutch because of this pedal? No, this is the e-brake. So it's got a foot style e-brake, which is a little older. You, you, you push down to set it, and then you push back to re release it. I am gonna zonk the dead pedal. I wish that they would have got rid of this carpet around the dead pedal, but it is a good size dead pedal. I just don't want the carpet there because your boots are gonna be all muddy and stuff. And then the seat controls are easy to get to. You do have two memory seat settings for the driver. 
I'm six feet tall and I'm swimming in space in here. I think without the armrest and the center console, that's where it's really freeing up the space compared to the Hyundai Santa Fe XRT. That actually hurts my forearms every time I do that. But anyways, steering wheel, they did a little trail sport style. You got your orange stitching, a little bit of vitamin C all the way around, flat black on all the switch gear. You do have paddles to go up and down that nine speed automatic transmission. And then the dash, they kind of changed the graphics and the fonts. You got your tack at the top, all digital. Uh, right there, that displays to show how the power transfers to all four wheels. But you got a bunch of different information in there that you could scroll through very easily. Your trip computer, analog coolant and fuel gauge, everything else is very simply laid out in a clear, concise, consistent, effective, efficient way. But why don't we go ahead? This thing has a back seat. Let's see how much room we have compared to the Hyundai Santa Fe in this Passport. All right, guys, back seat time. And you know what? You're going to get some more of that Trail Sport trim. Orange stitching for the rear passengers as well. So they did that very consistently. Backs of the seats have all the nice soft material. You have large pockets back here. What's going to be great is to keep some paper plates, maybe some plastic forks and some knives. Once you're done seasoning up the steak and you cook it, you can eat it right here in your Passport Trail Sport because there's just that much room. Now the back of the command center does have AC vents, no rear controls back here. You gotta do it from the front. I do like the way there's a nice two level Twinkie holder here. You could stack two Twinkies on top of one another for some nice creamy dessert. And then of course we got a home power source, two USB-A's, another pocket for more like I said, plates, napkins, things like that. All the stuff you want on a picnic, maybe some salt and pepper shakers. And then the seats, I'm telling you, you got lots and lots of room back here. The best part is you can recline just a little. It's just a little, but you can recline. My favorite part, you know how I like it, is you do have the slide feature. Now, this is all the way back. I don't know who in their right mind is going to want this. I guess if you want to well, you still, that's kind of stupid. That's a zonk. If you move the seat up, I should be able to recline it back more, but you can't. So I don't know who would want the seat like this, but I'm gonna keep it like this. Armrest, soft as a Charmin roll of toilet paper, triple ply, two cup holders, and they give you just enough room. If this was just a little bit more narrow, I would have zonked it, but they did give you plenty of room. But why don't we go ahead, since we're talking about room, let's see how much cargo space is in the Passport compared to this Hyundai. All right, guys, time to get into the Passport Trail Sport. Nice electric assist. Kind of raises up a little on the slower side, but you know what? It'll get there, and as you can see, it does. What you are gonna see is a lot more space than the Hyundai Santa Fe, especially when it comes to height. But you're looking at 41 cubic feet of space with the seats up. You fold the seats down, you're looking at almost 70 cubic feet of space. I do like the way that they have a convenient 12 volt power source, easy to get to. Of course, we have the required little nook here for your off-road Twinkies on both sides. And then check this out. Let's say you're mining for gold. You're gonna take the family on a gold mining expedition. You got your little pans, you got your little picket, magnifying glass, all that kind of stuff. You could store all of that right in this area. And then when you find the gold, this is where you can hide it. Don't tell anybody that you found the gold until you're ready to cash in. Little piece of advice. And then to put the seats down, guess what? I don't have to go up there. Hit the button. Got to make the noise though. Seats fold down and guess what? They are flat as a pancake and pancakes are pretty flat, unless you're going to IHOP where they're nice and thick and fluffy. But anyways, lots of room, maximize your space. But if you're ready, I'm ready. I got a passport. Let's go on a little trip together on throttle. All right, guys, we're in this 2022 Honda Passport Trail Sport. Right away, what you're really gonna like is the amount of space that you have in here. It's very well organized, and there's tons of storage places for all the things that you could even think about bringing on your journeys. If you push the drive button a second time, it does put it into sport mode. Plus, if you hit the little Passport Trail Sport button, that's gonna give you normal snow, mud, and sand. Like the nice clear graphics 
and the ability to go through those different modes. We're gonna keep it in normal since we're on the asphalt jungle. Now, touchscreen works very quickly, very intuitive, and then the visibility is really excellent in here, uh, front and back. Now, having it in sport mode is gonna adjust how the transmission and the engine behave also with throttle sensitivity, but uh, we need to do a little on throttle since we're speaking about on throttle and talking about on throttle. I'm gonna come to a stop. Nobody's behind us. On throttle, here we go. You'll notice I have the gauge that displays the intelligent four wheel drive system, that all wheel drive, sending the power to the rear to get the traction, to get the grip. And I like the way it shows where that power is going. Right now, it's front wheel, going to the front wheels, but when you go on throttle, you can see how it sends power to all four wheels. Having it in sport mode, it holds on to that gear. If I hit drive again, you'll notice it drops the revs, and now we are in your regular nine-speed automatic mode. Graphics on the dash are clear, easy to read, and very, very nice light steering. You don't have to worry about having this heavy steering making the vehicle feel very heavy and big. On the highway, during regular weekly day traffic, it's easy to drive this Passport Trail Sport. I like the linear torque delivery. I also like the way the blind spot monitoring is actually inside the vehicle to let you know when somebody's in your blind spot rather than being on the mirror itself. Navigation, that eight inch screen is large enough. I don't think there's a reason to have like a 22 inch screen in here. Seats are very, very comfortable and supportive. It's just the armrests are a little annoying having those captain's chair ratcheting armrests, but very smooth going down the road and don't think that those off-road style tires are gonna cause too much road noise because they're not. It actually gives you that extra off-road grip without going too over the top on road noise. Making a U-turn is very, very easy in this vehicle. I actually put it into manual shift mode. You do get a nice large gear indicator on throttle. Here we go. On the brakes. Handles really, really well for the type of vehicle that it is. And when you use the manual shift mode with the paddles, it allows you to stay in that proper torque curve very easily to really get that momentum down the road. Now what I'm gonna do is, is this really isn't meant to be a rock crawler by any means. It's really meant to go down those dirt trails. So what we're gonna do is, is we're on this dirt road, I'm gonna put it into sand because this is more like a sandy kind of gravel thing and we're gonna see how this uh, grips the uh, the ground. You ready? On right, throttle, here we go. No slip, all grip. Nice suspension travel. It just allows you to be able to go to those places that are a little further off the beaten path, so to speak. But really does a great job with the suspension and the ground clearance. All right, guys, once again, on throttle, here we go. <laughs> Lots of fun driving this thing. But like I said, the, uh, the way that they work the suspension allows you to soak up all the bumps very nicely. And just something a little extra to get you where you need to go. Really, really smooth with the shifting. I'm actually quite impressed. I'm back on asphalt, so we'll put it back into normal. But you can see the large gear indicator at the top there. Second gear, on throttle, here we go. On the brakes. Of course you're getting body roll, but you know what? You're gonna expect to have that because of the softer suspension for that off-road driving. But I'm telling you, it's very, very easy to drive this vehicle, and I'm very impressed by that. On 
the brakes. I'm telling you, the all-wheel drive system works fantastic. That's really where you see that super handling all-wheel drive that Honda and Acura are just known for. And you know what? For the most part, it's very, very quiet in the cabin. So hopefully this is giving you a nice overall feel of what the Honda Passport Trail Sport is all about. We're gonna get back to where it all started and wrap this one up, so I'll see you in a split second. All right, guys, it's been another great day with this Honda Passport Trail Sport. I definitely gotta thank everybody over at Honda for allowing Ready's Rides access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Is this now your perfect passport to adventure, being a trail sport trim, or would you rather go with the Hyundai Santa Fe route now that they have an XRT trim. Watch that review at the end of this one. Let me know in the comment section though how you're feeling about this vehicle if you wanna see more from Honda. But until we meet again, if you're new to the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radius Rise family. If you wanna help us keep making great content just for you, click the link in the description. Get yourself some Radius Rise merch. Gotta give it up to the champ. The one that makes all the magic happen. Lori working that camera so amazing. Show us some love in that comment section. Thank you, Lori, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.